Hello, I'm coming to you from our Granny's Legacy Showroom Boutique where we have all of our designs displayed for, for you to see or the quilt shops or anyone to see if they come through Albert Lee, Minnesota. We're like located in Minnesota on the crossroads of Interstate 35 and 90. So if you or you know someone who's buzzing through on this way, please stop and see us. So we are addressing fusible web today. So fusible web, you can kind of think of the Kleenex world. Kleenex, puffs, they're all a tissue. Well, fusible web is another name for heat and bond light or steam seam or soft fuse. We do not recommend any any of them in our patterns because many of you have very favorites that you're used to using. However, I will tell you that we do use heat and bond light. We sell it in a roll like this. It comes, it has a little plastic sheet inside that tells how to use it. Heat and bond light, you will notice, has the purple writing and it says heat and bond L-I-T-E on it. So this is the fusible web we choose to use. So I'm just going to give you a quick little tutorial on how our patterns are written and how we advise using heat and bond light. So the first thing we do when Katie writes our patterns, she will write them and they some of them will even be in the square so you know that they will fit on your wool. But this is just a simple apple and it has some little dots here and that just means the leaf covers that area. So the first thing you do is you take your heat and bond light and you trace your design. And we recommend tracing with a Sharpie fine marker. Do not use a pen. Many times in class, the pen when traced will disappear when you take it to the iron. A pencil works great too. However, pretty soon you've got gray graphite all over your hand. And if you're using a light color wool, that can transfer onto the wool when you're working with it. So we still recommend a fine tip Sharpie. So I have traced this apple. I have traced the little dots where something will be covering it. I have traced the leaf and now I'm ready to go to my ironing surface. So we use the, the granny's wool pads for our ironing surface because it reflects the heat up underneath of our work as well. And we need to get that heat and steam to the back. So now I place my heat and bond light over the red wool and the leaf, I can look and see which color side I decide is the right and which side is the wrong. And using a hot iron, a hot iron on dry, no steam. You just run over that ever so easily. Now we don't recommend pressing or pushing on your wool. You don't want to squish your wool. You don't want to make it out of shape. So that puts your heat and bond onto your wool. The next step is to cut out those shapes. So next you will just sit in your easy chair or at the table and we love the serrated scissors. It's like cutting bread. It, it cuts wool so easily and perfectly and you can just use every inch of that scissor and just cut so easily it's much easier on your hands i have a little bit of arthritis and i know some people suffer from that as well and using the serrated scissors it just doesn't fight you as you go through the wool so as i'm cutting around this shape now i will cut around my second shape so once again this is my fusible web heat and bond light and i traced on the paper side and I can show you that too. Heat and Bond Light has a paper side and a glue side. You trace on the paper side. So now I'm ready to take this to my ironing surface and, and put it on my background piece. So you remove the paper and as you remove the paper, you will see kind of, it looks like saran wrap. That's your adhesive. So you can place that on your background and here's my little leaf. And remember I had, when Katie did the pattern, she had the little dotted area. That told me that this leaf is gonna overlap a little bit. Now, the nice thing about using a wool pressing mat is you can take glass head pins or, or metal pins and you can 
get that leaf pinned in there exactly where you want it to be by just pinning a little bit horizontally. And then I highly recommend a pressing affair. This is our very own pressing sheet. They're not very expensive when you consider that ruined wool is very expensive. You can see through it, steam passes through it. You can also see if something tipped over or isn't in the right place before you get ready to steam it. So this is called our pressing affair. It floats down over the top very easily. Now it's time to turn the steam on in your iron. Now you want heavy steam. So hot iron, heavy steam, and you just go over that. Now this is the time, again, when I tell you, don't use a lot of pressure. All you wanna do is glide over the top and drive that steam down between those layers to get that adhesive activated so now as i'm going down just steaming over the top not too much now i'll come back and i'll remove my pins and then i'll decide whether it needs another steaming to make sure that everything's down where it's supposed to be so after my remove my pins i'll just go over it one more time just lightly and you can see the steam enjoy a free facial as you're going so now my i could do an entire piece like this and never lose any of my pieces when I'm stitching on because they're all sealed down so well that they're not going to come off in the stitching process. So that is our sm small demo on how to use a fusible web like Heat and Bond Light. We hope that this little tutorial will help aid in the success of your projects. Thank you so much.